What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Crypto Catch Up. Now if you do hear the rain and the thunder, I apologize. It is coming down heavy outside. It's putting on a show for you and me. Let's hope we get through this alive. Now I'm bringing you another exciting project, even midweek, which is out of character for me, but this is something which is certainly starting to turn heads and very quickly. And I always like to get in before guys like Ian Bellina and the other shillers because I am not associated with this platform. I will break this down for you to make it as simple as possible. I'm not just gonna read through a white paper and pretend like I know what's going on. This project is Igdrash. It's a trust-based, multi-dimensional blockchains, plural. Now there's a reason for that and we're gonna get right into it. So let's have a look at this project. So what is Yggdrash? Well, Yggdrash is a makeup of two words, Yggdrasil and Hash. So Yggdrasil is an immense mythical tree back from you know forever ago, 13th century, let's say. Um, and what it practically is, is like, this network, these the roots go into the ground and it's connected to the nine worlds of the, the Norse uh, cosmology. Now, that's from pretty deep stuff, but obviously there's this, this thinking behind this project about this consciousness state. Um, and, it, and it's kind of fed all the way through and, the, and everything kind of relates back to each other, which I'm really starting to enjoy um, with this project. Then you have hash. Well, that's just the encoding of, of you know, a certain amount of data to a fixed length. You bring them together, you get the project that we're looking at now. So what are they bringing to the table? Well, it's a next generation blockchain platform. We've heard that before, but we will go through the tech and explain why maybe that is true. Improved data capacity, speed and expandability, and they're gonna be doing that in a number of ways. Zero network fee for reputation based branches. Uh, and we'll also go through that branch concept. Oh, power's going, let's get through this. Downsizing of data of the chain. Now that is something that gets me super, super excited because there's one other project out there in this world called Pascal that uses something similar. So we'll get into that because it is awesome. Uh, DApps in a new way. Delegated proof of authority consensus and they will be utilizing the Yeed token, which is their ticker on an ERC-20. And their little motto down the bottom there is digitize everything into reality. So does it have a purpose? Well, we know issues right now. I'm not even gonna go through this in depth. The blockchains that we see today are inherently slow. They have huge blockchain sizes. So if you were to actually download the full node and all the unrelated uh, information or I should say related information such as the UXTO or the unspent transaction outputs on Bitcoin or any other blockchain like Ethereum, you are talking huge data. A large amount of time to sync irrespective of whether you go for a light wallet. It's still not enough. There needs to be a better way moving forward because this is only going to scale in a very linear fashion. Connectivity across blockchain. So we're starting to see a lot of atomic swaps, but it's not native integration. Maybe there's a solution to that. Maybe you should continue listening. Uh, decentralized application. So we're seeing issues with Ethereum, you know, CryptoKitties paralyzing their network. Well, how can we fix that? And scalability as a whole. So what is the use case of Yggdrash? How does it fit into the scheme of things? Well, if they were to solve all of the above, You've got DAP kind of ecosystems, a, you know, a, a play store for DAPs. You've got micropayments and remittance, no problem. You've got a decentralized exchanges that can utilize the token. And if they're able to actually, you know, minimize the size of that chain and keep it lightweight, well, you've got IoT, lightweight devices that can utilize that. And most, I guess, interest, interestingly, the cross-chain communication, but like I said, in a native manner, not in this atomic swap from Litecoin to Bitcoin, but in a way that allows other blockchains to interconnect with Yggdrash. That sounds pretty exciting, so let's truck on. All right, the tech. 
the best part of this whole thing. Let's get into it. Let's get down and dirty and let's break it down for you guys to make this worth your time. So the main chain. So what we want to go through here, guys, is just explaining how they're bringing their platform together. So this central bit here is called the stem chain. Well, that's funny. The main actual name of Yggdrasil is a tree and there's a stem. And everything else is called branches. Look at that. These guys are right on the money. Like I said, it's really bringing together this kind of consciousness state. So um, stick with me. So the stem here, the main net or the main chain uh, is an aggregate of all the information around these other branch chains. It's optimized for scalability using BRA or blockchain reassembling algorithm. Now, I'll go into that in a lot more detail once we get to the next um, part of the presentation. But that's certainly my biggest excitement as a part of this. Um, and the main stem chain there can actually manage the life cycles of these branch chains. So from creation, uh, updates, and to destruction or deletion of those particular chains if they are no longer required, uh, or a company doesn't want to utilize a platform anymore, things like that. And then you have these branches. So each branch off to the side of the actual stem chain are self-governing using a reputation base, so that delegated proof of authority. They work independently and they manage their own governance, the network, the database. They are virtually independent of that main chain. What that means is that dApps or decentralized applications like CryptoKitties are able to run and they will not paralyze the whole network if they are able to overcome the current capacity of a branch chain. Now we'll go into what is the current capacity later on, but that's a very good thing to modularize and pull apart to ensure that the network isn't plagued by one single point of failure. So you can set your own algorithm. Uh, like I said, you can actually connect other chains and other blockchains, not only for businesses, but Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, anything else can actually be integrated with this chain via native integration. So like I said here, it's not equal to a side chain, not equal, it's a branch. And there's a reason and there is a difference. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is that it naturally refers and connects these other branches and makes it a part of that stem chain. So let's get into the, some nitty gritty of the tech. So we're looking at smart contracts. Normally smart contracts are quite heavy. So if we look at Ethereum, you can run verbose, you know, uh, any amount of code you want and you pay through it through your gas fee. But storing that actual smart contract on the network is expensive in terms of storage space and, and a range of other factors. So what uh, Yggdrash is looking to do is actually to only store a binary file of the output uh, and to not uh, store you know, this verbose you know, kind of code set uh, to show the outcome because you're not gonna go back and rerun that code. So there's no point in having it there. Uh, maybe that's because you wanna keep it there for proof, but you can do that within the binary file as well. Sharding, so that's something that's starting to come out big time. You know, companies are trying to do it. Ziliqua, branch sharding on those little branches. So like I said, if you integrate another blockchain or you do, um, you know, your own particular chain for a business, you've got branch sharding there, which is currently looking at one to 10,000 transactions a second, which is obviously a lot higher than what Ethereum and others are doing at the moment. Now, this is the part that gets me excited. Blockchain Reassembling Algorithm, or BRA, of what they have called it. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called Mimblewimble, but if you haven't, I highly suggest you go and read about it. In 2016, a guy logged onto a Bitcoin forum, practically on a pseudo-anonymous name, kind of went and dropped the white paper in, just like Satoshi did back many, many years ago. And it was Mimblewimble, and it was a white paper to practically change the fundamentals of Bitcoin forever. Now it hasn't been picked up, there was a few holes, but they had a concept about minimizing the size of the chain. Now if you haven't also heard of Pascal Coin and their safe box technology, well it's very similar to what is happening here with what these guys are calling block box. 
So they're using these records and this hashing to hash, you know, let's say the Merkle tree or the Merkle root um, into an amount that is only needed. And if you were to unhash that, you would be able to see all of those transactions. So it gets a bunch of blocks from a particular chain. It then puts them in a block box. It hashes all of that together and then you get your output. And effectively, these block boxes mean you can take a big portion of the actual chain, put it in there, and save space on that data moving forward. It's a lot more complex than that, but that's you know a, a layman's example of why it is a big deal. File sharing and storage, records, resources, and storage moving forward. They haven't actually said whether they're going to use IPFS or they're going to use store, see a chain or anything like that. But based on, um, or see a coin, sorry, based on uh, the fact that it can integrate with multiple chains, that's a possibility. And interoperability. So you have Bitcoin creating a transact or a block, sorry, every 10 minutes. Then you have Ethereum creating something every 15 seconds. And you're saying that you can join it to this chain. Well, how are you going to get a snapshot of that? And it does this by using that Akashic slice. Now, what it does is, is I've used an example there of you know, a car in a window or proof of moment. So if you were looking out a window and you saw a car go by, in that moment, you knew it was there. So it takes a slice, like a, you know, a snapshot of what happened in that moment and can integrate with those chains. If you want to know more, have a look at their white paper. And they offer block, blockchain starter and smart kits. So they're, they're offering dev tools, uh, requirements based in terms of if you have a business, they will actually customize it for you in a way to make it beneficial for you. Uh, they're giving help for consensus algorithms, encryption algorithms like SHA-256, um, data around the Merkle tree and how you can handle that, uh, nodes, wallets, ZK snarks, so your zero knowledge proofs. That is a lot of technology bound into one on top of what's already going on in the world. So the biggest things I want to call out there, guys, is that interoperability and the BRA or your Mimblewimble style um, you know, reduction of the chain size. That is something that I think is absolutely tops and well done to the team. So the token and the consensus. So like I said, the token is called Yeed. Uh, it's the cryptocurrency of the Yggdrash platform. It's a means of transaction control and governance. It has the ability to actually, you know, you have to spend that yield to connect a new chain for the very first time. Uh, so well, like we've talked about, the consensus mechanism is a delegated proof of authority. It measures you based on your reputation and your reliability. So how much time have you spent resources on the network ensuring that obviously you are not doing the wrong thing and others are doing the right thing the more you do that the higher your reputation becomes and it lowers your fees to the point where you might actually end up having no fees whatsoever so if you are rich in yeed you do not have power you must have reputation and that means you need to act like a good boy and girl and participate in the network so another way to obviously incentivize there. Uh, so it is self-selecting in terms of the validator of those blocks, uh, and it comes from the individual branch and the highest reputation within that. Uh, there is not a lot of more information around it within the white paper, so I am interested to see how they're gonna handle that um, going forward. Your 10 second block time, and there's no single point of failure with this actual you know, validator or the self-selection, because what they always have is like a, a representative node for a failover in case something happens to that main um, reputation based you know validator all right let's have a look at the team now this team is very solid now when i say very solid is that they have a good mix of technology experience but a lot of it is in the blockchain space so on the right hand side you can see experience from coin one exchange the Icon Foundation team lead, BitHub IT Set team lead, and advisors from HSBC, Hyundai Card, etc. So the top four guys here that you're looking at, you got your CEO, CTO, CFO, and a, and a blockchain analyst, and that's where 
you know, a vast majority of that experience is coming from. So you see Peter here from Icon Foundation, um, Coin One, which is a Korean exchange, and, and they are, you know, topping uh, leaderboards. I think they're top 15, maybe top 20. They do at least $120 million any one day in Australian dollars, that is, so 80 odd million in American. You could say that a pretty big deal. All right. Now you can check the team out further on their website. That is just a short snapshot of that team. So let's get into the final thoughts. So what we're looking at here, guys, is a next-gen blockchain platform in terms of the fact that they're bringing together that smaller chain. They're bringing in sharding. They're bringing in smart contracts and dApps which are independent of that main chain, allowing for you to run your own business as a, as a branch chain um, or you know, have a DAP that is going to function irrespective of how many people uptake on your service. So that is super, you know, super exciting. Uh, I really love the fact that they're able to utilize that chain, you know, reduction, because if you're not aware, the time it takes to download a, a Bitcoin blockchain, eight days, you know, for some, if you're trying to get all of it, uh, even longer for Ethereum, I think they're up over 600 gig or something like that for the size. And, and Bitcoin, when I checked yesterday, was about 150 gig, huge amounts of data, does not suit small devices, does not suit home users. It causes further centralization because you and I can't partake in the network. Let's get that through everyone's heads. So this is certainly a big deal in that regard. Other than that, let's have a look at the token sale. So it is coming up on the 19th of March, the 23rd of March. Like I said, the Yi token, they're setting a $40 million hard cap with 50% of the uh, token supply available at ICO. There's a $10 billion supply, a billion unit supply, sorry, one ETH minimum. Uh, and one Yi will be equal to 0 0.008 US cents. Now, if you have a look at something like Tron, who does not offer anything in terms of this kind of technology, they may have partnerships up the wazoo, but this is something that at that price is certainly worth your while as long as they can stick to a plan uh, and move forward with what their roadmap is looking to do. All right, guys, that is coverage of that platform there. I can't go into too much more because I don't want to waste all of your time. It is very hard to cover something that is technical. We'll just jump over, have a look at their website quickly. So this is it here. So ygg-drash.io, so igdrash.io. You can download the one, paper, uh, one page or the white paper. Just kind of goes through what we've talked about there. Dex and remittance, the team, advisors, uh, and your roadmap. So we've got that pre-ICO launch, main ICO launch, uh, and then you're going through distribution, and there's more information to come. Now, as you can see here, guys, mainnet is still a while away. However, to get in early on something like this at that price is going to be worth your while. In my personal opinion, this is not financial advice any way, shape, or form. Now, if we look at some of their social media, they have got a medium channel starting to, to kick off. They're starting to share other people's reviews, which is great. Uh, proof of concept is looks like it's coming updated two days ago. Uh, there's not a lot of information in here at the point in time. And you've got your Twitter as well that's sharing a bit of information. Like I said, it's starting to kick off. All right, guys. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you enjoy this project. Please put any questions down below. As always, like and subscribe and thank you for listening.